Last Sunday, as we recall, a young man came to Jesus, knelt in front of him and asked him, Lord, what shall I do to inherit everlasting life? And after he inquired from him that he is observant of the commandments, he said, there is one thing necessary. Go and sell what you have, give it to the poor, and then follow me. Today, Jesus is going to be deepened and deepen um, that response by saying to the to John and James, the sons of Zebedee, that if they really want to be sitting at the right and the, he and the left, they have to deal with that with the Father. But for them, right now, he is inviting them, if they are willing to drink from the cup, and if they are ready to be baptized, by the baptism, he is already baptized. And we know that they say yes. And Jesus remind them that yes is true, that you will drink from the cup and be baptized by the baptism. But authority is not part of my kingdom. Whoever is last, the first, may be the last. And whoever wants to be an authority in the church, he has to be the servant of all. In the first reading today, we encounter the prophet Isaiah, which normally is called the prophet known as the servant of Yahweh. And in those few lines that we read today, he anticipates the passion of Christ. He anticipates that passion that Christ is going to endure for us. So that by, uh, by his love for us, he who loaded himself by our iniquities, he is the one who are going to suffer so that we can be saved from the condemnation at the end of our journey. I like to focus today on that second reading because that second reading is very powerful and really makes sense. If we have the first reading, which is a prophecy to the passion of Christ, Jesus speaking about his passion, and that's why the question was asked, let us sing, let us sit at your right and hand. In the, in the second reading, we find that the author, the author of the Hebrews, is talking to us that Jesus is our high priest. And because he is a high priest, he who was God made flesh, he can sympathize with us, because whatever we go in life, disappointment, hurt, whatever it is in life, Jesus went through it all. Which one difference? We were subject to sin. He was eliminated from that, from sin. Many times, you know, we see that when we speak about priests and the in the in the in the scriptures, especially speaking about the priest of Jesus Christ. We know that he came from heaven purposely to be the victim and priest on the hill of Calvary. And that's why that sacrifice once for all, we who are baptized participate in it. And in a very special way, those who are consecrated and ordained for this purpose. I'm talking about priests or um, consecrated priests. And what we really have to keep in mind that there is only one priesthood and so the priest at mass is jesus any priest who celebrates the mass is participating in the priesthood of jesus christ many people think well you know priest this and no one priesthood because he is the one that came from the father to be for us the ostia that means the victim and the sacerdotes to be the priest. Today, as you know, all over the world is being celebrated World Mission Sunday. And this gospel today really make a very great opportunity to speak about this because number one, the greatest gift that God can give to individuals to be missionaries. Why? Because Jesus came from heaven, as the Father has sent me, I send you. What is the purpose of sending us? To bring the good news to all nations. 
as the Father has sent me, I will send you to bring the good news to all nations. Now many of you know that missionaries leave everything. They leave their country, they leave their families, they leave their own that, that they have. So the first gospel of last Sunday, they already did it. And now there is another step that they have to take. And that is that they also will shed their blood for what they believe. Sometimes that's what happened to many missionaries. Yes, tomorrow, for example, we'll celebrate the feast of St. Jo St. Joe's jo Joker and his companions, Jesuit priests between Canada and New York who came to evangelize how much they suffered. How much they suffered because they were misunderstood by the Indians of that region. Even their fingers were cut off so they cannot celebrate Mass. Some of them, even their tongues was cut off, so they will not tell, even speak about the gospel. And we know that those people, uh, many times, they suffer a great, great persecution. Why? Because many times they are misunderstood, and sometimes even they go to a region that the culture and the language is so hard for them, and it takes years before they begin to learn their language. What is the, what is the role of the missionary? The role of a missionary is to go in that small village where they will build a small clinic, they build a small school, they build a small church, and there they begin to teach the people about the faith. First you have to heal, first you have to feed, and then you bestow on them the word of God. And how much sacrifice he does, with little he has to accomplish all that he wants to accomplish. World Mission Sunday is a very important day for us Christians because by our very nature the, near, the church is a mission. The mission of Christ to evangelize all peoples of the world. Many people think that we need to go to Africa and we need to go to uh, Central America Remember, dear people, that our country, America, is still terra missionis, is still a place of missions, because there are so many people who did not hear the word of God, and if they hear it, they are far out, and we need to reach out to them. This is what this Sunday is all about, dear people. This Sunday we pray for those lay people and religious, who abandoned everything to go and do what the Master asked each one of us to do. This is what we pray. We pray that we will be missionary at heart. If you recall today, Pope Francis elevate to sainthood the parents of Saint Therese. Now many people say why he chose this day? Because as you know Saint Therese although she died at the age of 24, she wants to be a missionary so bad. She wants to go to the missions. And because she suffered so much, although she never left the cloister, she is now proclaimed as the saint, the patron of missions. And today her parents were elevated to sainthood by Pope Francis there in Rome. And so we pray today in a very special way. We pray for these men and women who really are begging us to pray for them. They are asking us to join them if we can in our prayers and in our intentions. And pray that God will send more young men and women to the mission field to bring the good news. And for us Catholics, we need to wake up from our sleep because our churches, you think that they are going, they are, some of them are closed, there will be more closed churches if we don't evangelize our neighborhoods. If we don't reach out to our people and bring them back where they belong. This is the most urgent, urgent moment that we have in our history, in the history of the church, that we need to pray, we need to work, and we need to support the mission of the church, which is the mission of Christ. 
As we call the celebration of the world today, let us take that last sentence of the Gospel, dear Peter, where Jesus said, if you want to be first, you need to be the slave of all. If you want to rank in authority, you need to serve. And that is what he tried to tell John and James and tell each one of us. Because sometimes there are people that when they give them some authority, authority goes to their heads. And sometimes they think that they have achieved the goal. Little we know that if you are an authority in the church, you need to serve. And to serve without no, without no reservation whatsoever. This is what Jesus is trying to teach each one of us as we participate in his mission, the mission that he received from the Father. May God send us more men and women who by their prayers and by their, their, their uh, really intention to serve Jesus will do more than Jesus asked us last Sunday. They are people who will lay down their lives for what they believe. And for us who are confirmed, this is what confirmation means. To lay down, to die as a witness for what you believe. God bless.